The music game tells a story of a group of 20 somethings who forge deep bonds in a world that isn't always full of light and hope. What was your inspiration? I wanted to write the book that I could write. So, you know, it, it was the thing that I felt I had the most authority to write about. And it was actually um, kind of a, initially difficult, but eventually very motivating to write about something that I wasn't necessarily seeing a lot in the in books that I had read. So to, to just remind myself, and I, I think the more you read, the more that becomes clear too, that everything can be literature. And so, for example, like not having read that many books that are set in Ottawa, which is my hometown, uh, you know, so just saying like, well, Ottawa is interesting and I know it by heart. Uh, and just to kind of ground some of my characters in streets that were very familiar to me, or also to have some of them working dead end jobs. I've worked a lot of dead end jobs. So I kind of try to. Um, uh, kind of like pick and choose in almost like a um, uh, really like a composite uh, you know let's say I would imagine a character in a certain situation and then I would tell myself like maybe I can give this character my childhood friend's parents but she'll also have this other person's physical appearance the structure of this book is really interesting. It frequently shifts between characters, perspectives, places, and time periods in a non-chronological order, and yet it all makes sense. From the beginning, did you have a sense of the order in which you wanted to present this content, or did your plans shift throughout the writing and editorial process? Yeah, the a chronological order, but at the same time, to make sure that everything fits within a universe that is logical and um, that doesn't cheat, right? So we actually made like a very precise timeline of events. Actually, I think that's something that is one of the things that I credit, um, you know, my French publisher, Le Cartanier, the most with is something that we worked on. Initially, I think the way I presented the stories was almost more thematical, so almost more... Um, I'm not sure dogmatic or a certain way where it was like, okay, this is going to be all the stories about uh, domestic violence. This is all the stories about suicide. This is, and and uh, with the editors, they really helped me to find um, an order that was more organic and that was more yeah poetic and that kind of hooks the reader in uh, with different uh, emotions with identification but then uh something harder to take and then the usually the i think there's four sections or divided in parts and usually at the end of each section there's a story that's a bit more uh almost like a poem and prose that's a bit uh, more open and the intention was kind of to let the reader breathe a little your book has been recently translated into English, as Irene mentioned. And so we're kind of interested in the process. How involved were you in overseeing the translation process? Did you worry that any of your beautiful work would be lost in translation? So I actually got very involved <laughs> in the translation process just because I, I could and that I wanted it to be as good as possible. And obviously the English... Um, market is you know it's the biggest uh one and it, it's uh you know not only in canada but in the the united states i i feel like uh the content of my book uh is relevant to uh that readership as well so i really did feel like it was um worth it for me to you know collaborate and to try to 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 bring it to to bring what I could to the translation process just because I don't personally write in English but I I did have a lot of insight into how this would have actually been said or what this actually means because 
um, yeah, because so much of the context in the book is actually things that exist in English. So, yeah. Mm -hmm.